Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Sony Acres Gardening. Welcome to my channel. Make sure you get subscribed while I'm here. We've got a special little event going on for you today that is a little bit different than what we usually do on the channel. I have with me today Pam Farley from the website Brown Thumb Mama, and we're excited to have her here. Pam just released a new book, and uh, we're going to talk about her book on container gardening today. Um, before we get started, let me just give you a little bit of a rundown. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do an interview here that's probably going to last 45 minutes to an hour total. Uh, with Pam. And we've got some questions that have been submitted by the members of the Gardening Academy. And uh, it's just a lot of fun stuff that we're going to be talking about. Here on YouTube, we are going to go for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, with Pam. We'll talk about her book. We'll talk about some, answer a few questions. And then if you would like to hear the full interview, then you can come over and join us in the Gardening Academy. And there's a link in the description of this video. You can click on there to come join us and get the full uh, interview there. Um, also, to make it maybe a little bit easier for you to come and get the full interview, we are going to do a 14-day free trial for you right now. So if you click on that link, you can sign up for 14 days for free, watch the rest of Pam's interview, and then see what else we have to offer over in the Gardening Academy. Okay. All right, Pam, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. It's fun to do this. This is the first time I told Pam before we started. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done anything like this before. So Kind of be Thanks fun for to having do. me. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're excited because you have this new book. I have my mm -hmm. copy right here that um, we're going to be talking to, about today. But before we we start in on the book, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Uh, where are you from? How long have you been gardening? Tell us about your garden a little bit. My family and I live in Northern California, Zone Nine, and cool. I have been gardening since I was little with my dad and my grandpa um, in our house now, I've been container gardening, um, in the ground gardening and raised bed gardening for over 25 years. So had, I had some good years and some bad years, but that's gardeners know that's, that's often how it goes. Yeah, that is. So, so you've kind of got a mix then you've got a lot, a lot of containers, obviously from the pictures, by the way, did you take the pictures? Most of these Many pictures? of them, not all, yeah. but most just gorgeous. It looks like you just got an amazing garden. So how much of your garden is container versus in ground versus raised bed? Right now, all of my fruit trees are in containers. Um, so that's six. Most of the veggies are in raised beds, uh, blueberries in containers, of course, because they need special soil. And then the artichokes in the front yard, of course, are directly in the ground. Cool. All right. Um, well, so let's talk about your book. So first off, for, for those of you that didn't see it before, it is called The First Time Gardener Container Food Gardening. And this is a just a super good. Uh, so I've actually had the book for, well, I don't know, it's three or four months at least. I, I've read it through and uh, we, we had to get some time scheduled for this. Just a beautiful, really good, solid beginner's guide to growing vegetables in containers. Who, who is your target? for this book when you when you wrote this book who are you trying to target so just like you said this book is written for the absolute beginner there is no question that's too silly or too um, basic i i show step by step with photos how to plant a seed how to plant a seedling what does full sun mean um, in any industry there's a lot of jargon and coming from the corporate world, I, I remember this. And that those were the kinds of questions that people would ask me. And they would be so embarrassed to say, you know, what, what does, you know, is it full sun if there's, you know, shade from the fence for an hour or two? What, and people would, you know, be afraid that they couldn't garden and get all wound up about things that nobody had explained to them and they were ashamed of having basic questions. And that's not, you can't learn if you don't ask questions. So I, yeah. I wanted to make sure this was open and welcoming, especially to the the new gardeners that have come on the scene in the last few years. Well, I, I think you nailed it. I love a lot of the, you've, you've got just some tables that have really good information, you know, sizes of containers to use for the different crops and everything. It's just really good well done book so Thanks. so good job is this your first book or do you have other books that you've published 
I have written, this is my first book with Quarto, which is a big publishing house. I've published some other books on homemade natural cleaners, um, essential oils, and things like that that are also available online. But this is my first real book with a real publisher. So let's let's kind of tackle some of the content. Talk a little bit about um, you know growing in containers, which is is something that's always interesting to me and something that I've struggled with. Um, I, I'll talk as we get a little bit later in. I, I've got a few questions, a few things that I struggle with, and I'm hoping you can help me with. But um, why do you think that it's important that people learn how to grow their own food? There's lots of reasons. Um, there's, of course, it's fun. There's a huge sense of accomplishment. It's great for kids. And of course, it saves money. And I think a lot of that, a lot of us, it kind of came to light when we were all at home so much. Um, it can be fun to grow house plants you can grow herbs on your windowsill you don't have to you know immediately plow up your front yard and plant you know an entire jungle you can just do little things that will help your budget that will help your health and you get an incredible sense of accomplishment when you can say oh this you know this strawberry shortcake i grew the strawberries or yeah. oh here neighbor you know new neighbor we had a bumper crop of cucumbers here's a few cucumbers that you can have that kind yeah. of thing what would you consider maybe your top 5 tips or you know what how, whatever number of tips um that you would give to somebody that's new to container gardening ooh that's a good question so I think the, the biggest thing to remember is, and this is kind of a logical thing, but choose the right size container for your plant. For example, if you are putting a, um, you know, you're going to have a lemon tree and when you buy it it's just a little stick you know it's a tiny little thing and you might think oh i can just you know put this in a five gallon bucket and it'll be fine not it might be fine for a year but every time you replant it you're going to kind of shock it and so it's it's better to put it in a container that's the right size for the finished plant also watering is something that i see people get very agitated and concerned about and if there's a very easy way to see if your plant needs to be watered, you have 10 of these and you can just put your finger deep into the soil and see if the soil is damp or not. And some people will, will say, oh, you have to water, you know, twice a day or if it's hot or if it's, oh, and, and watering can be very, you know, people get very agitated about it, but, but it's easy to check. And, and that is something that will definitely help. I mean, your plant can't live with too much water or with not enough water. So that's an easy one to check. Cool. Um, what about, and, and I know in the book, you have a, a pretty good list of some of the best crops for uh, new gardeners to, to grow in containers. What would you say are your top five, your, your favorite ones to grow in containers? So my number one is strawberries. I think strawberries are like a gateway drug. Um, <laughs> they're great for kids. They're um, they're pretty fail safe. So, and of course my, they never make it in the house. Like the kids just sit out there and just pick them off and eat them right off the plant. Zucchini is another really good one. It's again, almost fail, fail proof. Um, the seeds are big, so they're easy for kids to plant they grow really well and they produce like crazy. Um, we're big fans of cucumbers. Cucumbers will need a trellis or some kind of a structure to grow up because they're vining. Um, I, strangely enough, I found out my my favorite aunt, who is a, a very good gardener, doesn't like cucumbers. I was like, <laughs> how are we related? This is this even <laughs> possible. Um, something that Blueberries grow great in containers. Um, they are a little bit more intermediate. Uh, they need special soil and you need usually need two blueberries so that they can pollinate. But that's um, 
a, a, another one of my favorites, a little more unusual, but when, when you, you know, say, oh yeah, I grew these blueberries, people will just, wow. Let's see. And some other, I clearly have some, some favorites. Um, cantaloupe, again, we'll need something to clean climb up. I, I actually grow my cantaloupe up a tomato cage because it's what I had. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I can see we're really heavy on the fruit here. I think that's <laughs> that's something that's that definitely has to do with having kids. And bell pepper. I okay. Amazingly enough, there's a picture in the book of I grew a bell pepper plant in a five gallon. It might have even been smaller than that, a three gallon it had 10 peppers on this plant. I mean, mm. it was an incredible super producer. So impressive. Cool, cool. Um, we, you talked a little bit of, earlier about the container sizes. And, and I know in the book you mentioned BFG uh, is, is the abbreviation that you gave there. Um, why don't you explain that? Talk a little bit more about how we can, can come up with the right size container. I thought this would be a good way for people to remember it when they're at the garden store, because there's so many choices and so many plants and you might just, you know, um, so the BFG stands for big enough. So you want the container to be big enough to support the full grown plant. So for example, for radishes, you could use, you know, a much smaller container than you would for your blueberry bush or your lemon tree or something like that. You want it to be, you know, if you're growing carrots, it needs to be nice and deep. Of radishes, of course, are a lot smaller, so it could be shallow. The F is for food safe. And this one is important because I've seen a lot of pictures and discussions on the internet about, oh, plant your to plant your potatoes in this stack of old tires and and you can use, you know upcycle this random thing to grow your food in and I suggest that if it's not something that you would eat your dinner off of you should not be growing food in it and you know there's planters get hot and if you're growing potatoes in a stack of tires you just don't know if there's chemicals in the tires that are going to get in the soil and get in your food and there are so many ways to get food safe containers that it's, I, I feel like we don't have to resort to these containers that they, that they talk about on the internet. Mm -hmm. If you have, let's say a, you know, a, a beautiful bucket that I don't know, like that great grandpa used to use for milking and you're not sure if it's got lead in it or if it's safe, but it's sentimental and important then take a food safe container and slip it inside that decorative great container. Idea. That's yeah, always that's a, a good idea. solution. And G is for good drainage. And this is super important because if your plants are in wet, soggy soil, they're not going to, they could get root rot. They're not going to live. And when you're growing in a container, there is a finite amount of soil. And so over time, salts and fertilizers and things can build up and you want to make sure that when you're with your watering, the water drains out of the bottom and so it leaches away those extra salts and things. So if your container doesn't have holes in the bottom, you'll want to drill them, drill holes in the bottom and I show how to do that. And, and then you just monitor the water by putting your finger in the soil and seeing if it comes out damp or not. While, while we're on the watering thing, that, that's my biggest struggle. And, and part of that is because the rest of my garden is kind of on this automatic schedule. I mean, I still have to go turn it on, but I know that every Monday and every Friday I'm watering my garden, whereas containers I struggle with a little bit more. Do you have any hints for us as to how to make the whole watering process, maybe remembering to water uh, a little bit easier? So I, I'm a little bit spoiled. I have my containers on an automatic drip system. Um, I still have to turn it on, like you say, but it, then it just, it runs for a while. An important thing to remember is, I mean, you can, there's lots of ways to remember. You can put a note in your calendar, um, you know, make, make it a habit to, you know, maybe you're going to go for your morning walk and you just go check and see 
if a representative container needs water and then you know, oh, I've got to do that when I get back. Um, it's important to not, I've seen um, a lot of places have the the kind of sprinklers that go and they, they go from the top. That can often cause problems with your plants because if the leaves are wet, it just opens them up to the possibilities of fungus and mold and things like that. So whenever possible, I always try to water the soil, either with like a dram watering wand or something like that, um, that gives a shower of, of water at the base. And it's okay if the water drains out. That's good. That's leaching the soils and extra fertilizer out of the container. So after a while, also, you'll kind of get in the swing of it and you'll say, oh, you know, the, I can see that, you know, the radishes in their little shallow container are probably going to need to be watered every day, but you certainly don't need to water your lemon tree every day. That's going to be in a big container that holds a lot more water. So you get, you get into a rhythm after, after just a few, a few days. Um, what about soil? Let's talk a little bit about soil. How do we choose the best? Is there, do you, I mean, I saw some recipes. Do you usually make your own or do you buy store-bought, you know, already pre-mixed? What do you do with soil? So I, I usually mix my own container soil just because in the long run, it turns out to be less expensive. I make my own compost. I'm, and that's a component of that. I'm, I'm working on doing worm composting. I haven't gotten there yet so that's a that's another goal of mine a lot of folks will just scoop up soil from their in the ground garden and put it in a container and i don't recommend that in most places your garden soil is not ideal it's here in particular it's kind of thick and has clay and you want your container soil to be loose and porous but still hold water because again you've got a finite space for your plant to grow in and so if you know plants in the ground can you know reach out and go look in all directions for the nutrients they need but the container plant is is stuck so you want the the soil to have you know it needs to have a little space for oxygen to get to the roots and the water and the fertilizer so it either mixing up your own or if, if you're just starting with a container or two, there are great mixtures at the garden center and the folks at the garden center can help you pick out the right one. So maybe without giving away the recipe, what are the ingredients that you put in your, your <laughs> So mix? it's I want, pretty... I want them to buy the book to get the recipe, but. Oh yes, of course. So it's, it's a pretty simple recipe. Cocoa core, perlite, vermiculite, worm castings, and compost. And there's a specific ratio, of course, and you mix everything together and then you've got all, you've got everything you need for the soil. Now you might notice that there's not chemical fertilizers in there. A lot of times the bagged stuff has chemical fertilizers in it and right. it's, you know, slow release and da 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 da. I choose not to use those because I want to control which fertilizers I use. I like to use more natural ones like kelp meal and um, and different things like that. So one of the advantages of, of mixing your own, it's kind of like making your own potato soup instead of buying the can. You can, you know, add your it's own stuff to it and it comes out so much better. Well, we're both on the, the same lines of thinking there. So I agree with you for sure. Um, all right. So maybe one last question before we kind of finish up with the YouTube segment of this video. Um, what about problems when, when we have pests and, and diseases and stuff like that? In your book, how do you deal with, with those kind of issues? So every gardener, there's there's going to be something. And it's it's important not to think you're a failure because a bug came along or something nibbled off the plant as soon as you planted it that that happens to everybody and one of the things that i saw with new gardeners is that um and many garden books is garden books will say oh if you have such and such worm this is what you do or if you have da 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 
well, if I'm a brand new gardener, I don't know that I have, you know, a tobacco hornworm or if yeah. I have da da da. I just know that, um, my, you know, the the leaves of my bell pepper have squiggles all over them. What what's what are squiggles? So many, you know, in the the plant groups online, you know, what's this? So I was very fortunate that the publisher allowed me to do like a a reverse troubleshooting. So the it's led by the problem. So the problem is I have squiggles on my leaves. And then, oh, this is this is what it probably is, and this is what you can do. Or, oh, there's my tomato leaves have these black crumbs on them. What does that mean? Oh, that's tomato worm poop. Here's what you look for. Here's what you do. Because to so many beginning gardeners, it's just a mystery. Why do my tomatoes have bites out of them? What's happening? What's going? You know, why are my tomatoes splitting? So it's it's geared definitely toward the beginner, so that they know what to look for and what to do. Yeah, and I love that as part of your book that that you handled it that way. I think that's a, a clever way to do it um, to to kind of go backwards at it and and talk about the the symptoms instead of because you're right. I mean, I, I get people asking all the time you know, so what's happening to my plant? It, well, it could be, I mean, there's like a million species of bugs on this planet, you know, I probably know. more than that. I don't know, but you know, yeah, right. let's, I... let's, figure, let's keep them out. Let's figure out how to keep them away, you know? Okay, Pam, thank you for being here. I appreciate the, the time that you spent with us. So that you guys know in the description of the video, I have included links to all of Pam's uh, social media, her website, uh, we've included a link for her book. And again, the book's name is The First Time Gardener, Container Food Gardening. It is available on Amazon. And so I've included a link down there. Um, depending on time of year, there's some some really good prices. And, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the list price is $26. And it's definitely worth the $26. But um, I've seen it a time or two uh, considerably less than that. And so uh, a fun book, really good book. This is, I mean, it's going to be a great resource. I'm excited to have this book with me. I've read it cover to cover and uh, it, it's just got a lot of, of great stuff. So Pam, thank you for being here. Uh, there is a Kindle version available as well. Um, mm -hmm. So beautiful pictures, just a, a great little book. So check out Pam's uh, information and uh, all of her links are down below. And then for those of you here on YouTube as well, we, we did end up going uh, a, a little over an hour for this total interview. And uh, we have put the extended interview as part of the Gardening Academy. So the Gardening Academy is our, our monthly membership service. And we have just a ton of information for you there. Interviews like this, we do mini courses. We have over 40 different mini courses that are available for you. We do a Q&A session every month. And so there's a lot of great information. And if you want the full version of this interview, uh, you can go and sign up for the Gardening Academy at the link down below. And for a special offer for you right now, we do have a 14-day uh, free trial. So you can go and finish watching Pam's interview and check out, see all of the different resources that are available for you in the Gardening Academy. There's a link in the description of the video you can click on. You sign up for that 14-day free trial. And uh, I know you're going to like it. Like seven out of 10 people that join that trial end up staying. You're going to love it. So um, just click on the link. You can get signed up, watch the rest of Pam's interview, and then uh, come see all of the other great things that we have for you there. All right, Pam, thanks again for being here. We appreciate you and uh, make sure that you guys go pick up her book. It's, it's awesome. You're going to love it. And uh, we, we got this video out just in time for the holidays. So this would make a great gift for you as well. So mm -hmm. uh, send those, those to all your family as well. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. Everybody have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Happy gardening.